Good evening, good evening, everyone. It's Dr. Sheree M. Good, and it is seven o'clock on the nose. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And as people come in, then we will have them join us. Um, welcome to Preserve Your uh, Health Through Self Care. This is a free webinar that we offer. This will be available on uh, YouTube as well for replay. So I will put that link out there uh, later. There will be a replay of this uh, for those that could not join us tonight. But we're gonna just go ahead and jump right in because it's seven o'clock and as people join, then we can go ahead and go from there. Welcome, welcome. Delena, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. So it's seven o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and then other folks can jump in as they join. Again, this is Preserve Your Health Through Self-Care. I'm Dr. Sheree I'm Good, the Recharge Strategist. What does it mean to preserve? It means to maintain, to keep intact, to keep from uh, free from injury, harm, and destruction, to conserve. So when we talk about preserving our health, we're talking about maintaining and keeping our health intact, keeping ourselves free from harmful diseases, from illnesses, from sickness, preventing any kind of destruction to our health. So tonight, we're going to be talking about how we can do just that, preserve our health, and it's going to be through self-care. So what I've done is I've broken down the word preserve. And so uh, we made it an acronym. So we made uh, a way that we can perform that self-care and preserve our health with each letter of the word preserve. So the first P is to plan. What are we planning? We're planning our self-care regimen. We're planning our routines, our routine physicals. Um, our routine labs, going to see our doctor just to make sure that everything's okay. We're planning our recharge time, planning our meals, and even our sleep. The R for preserve is to recharge. What does that mean? You're going to reboot, rejuvenate, regroup, refocus, restore, refresh, reinvigorate yourself. All of us can stand a recharge from time to time, right? We may feel drained, we may feel tired. And just like our gadgets, they die out after they've been working and working and working. The same thing happens with us as humans. We tend to die out, we get fatigued, we get groggy, we get tired, and we need a chance to just stop and recharge our internal batteries. Now, how are we gonna do that? Some of the ways that we're gonna do that is by the eight recharge pillars of self-care. What the eight recharge pillars of self-care do is they help to guide you to being whole, mind, body, and spirit. And as you see, there are eight of them. Self-advocacy self is the first one where we're making sure that we're setting clear boundaries, that we're speaking up. We're learning to say no to others so that we can say yes to ourselves to preserve our health. Next is nutrition, which we're going to talk about nutrition uh, a little later, um, but it involves what you're eating the healthy, nutritious foods that you're ingesting. You are what you put inside of you. Um, staying hydrated, that's a part of nutrition as well. The next recharge pillar of self-care is movement. Regularly exercising, we'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Releasing those endorphins, improving your health through movement. Relaxation, unplugging from everything else so that you can plug into yourself so that you can recharge those batteries that we were talking about. Knowing when to relax, that's a part of uh, preserving your health as well. Meditation, staying in the moment, stillness, just being right there in that moment, having purposeful breathing, which we'll talk about a little later as well. Forgiveness, um, letting go of the things that hurt us because that can hinder our progress, our success. It can actually have a toll, take a toll on our entire being, mind, body, and spirit. So letting go of what hurt us, living regret-free, and moving on. Now, after you've forgiven, you have to heal. And uh, my new book coming out, Permission to Feel and Heal, that talks about the decreasing the recall of bad events that uh, may have happened to you in your life, leaving the past behind, getting back to you. All of that is a part of recharging. And last but not least, once you've done these things to nurture yourself and preserve your health through self-care, you're going to celebrate. That's acknowledging those accomplishments, feeling whole, mind, body, and spirit, and just enjoying life. The E in preserve stands for eat. Healthy eating, it's imperative. So we have to ditch that sugar and that salt, eat fresh or frozen foods, and avoid canned processed foods. We're going to ditch the crap, as my good girlfriend, Delana Watkins, always says. Ditch that crap. Those are those concentrated, refined, altered, processed foods that 
they taste good on the lips for a moment, but then they leave you feeling drained, fatigued, feeling like you have no energy left because they're not life-sustaining foods. All the fast food, the sweets, the junk foods, where do they go? Right into the garbage. We're going to ditch them. Instead, we're going to eat the crow, clean, raw, organic, whole foods that's going to sustain, sustain you for a long time, have you feeling energi energized naturally. It's going to help you eat more raw foods, organic foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, things that are going to last with you for a while so you don't um, have that temporary boost in your sugar levels and then you have that drop where you feel extra, extra fatigued after it, so after you've eaten it. The S in preserve is for stress less. And I'm sure all of us can associate with that at some point or another, we all have experienced an insurmountable amount of stress, whether it be a life occurrence or, or just having a bad day in our work or our business. If we stress less, then it's gonna reduce our risk of heart disease and stroke because stress truly is a silent killer. It's like dripping a slow poison into your veins. And so if we manage our stress, we're able to better preserve our health. How do, we, how do we stress less? What can we do to do that? I have taken all the work out of it for you. Here are some effective ways to stress less. These are just some ideas. Just breathe. What's one of the first things we do when we feel stressed out? We hold our breath, whether we realize it or not. The next time you're upset, just look at what you're doing. You, you hold your breath in. So sometimes we just need to breathe. It may not need to be for a long time, but just you know, until you feel better and you de-escalate it and you've calmed yourself down. Taking a power nap is another good way that you can help to reduce your stress. For that moment, it helps things to just not seem so serious. It helps you to just sleep things away a little bit and then wake up and you can uh, have a better thought process. Reading a book has tend, uh, tends to decrease stress. Dancing, lighting candles, listening to music, watching a funny movie, calling a friend. You can read the rest of them, but these are just some suggestions. And then Helping someone else. This is one of my favorite ones because when we're helping others, we're taking we're taking the the attention off of ourselves and off of what's bothering us and our stress, and we're pouring into someone else, and that makes our problems seem not so cumbersome. And then at other times, all we have to do is simply do absolutely nothing, and that is the hardest thing for a lot of us to do is just to do nothing at all. Why? Because we're so used to going, going, going. So we, have, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Most of us use about 22 of that 24 hours and then we fit sleep in where we can, right? So challenge yourself for 60 seconds a day to do absolutely nothing. Don't have the cell phone, don't have the computer, don't have anything, no television, no radio, nothing. Just sit in silence and do absolutely nothing for 60 seconds a day and begin to increase that as time goes on and on, you'll be able to sit longer and longer and preserve your health by just doing absolutely nothing, giving, your giving yourself a chance to refocus, rejuvenate, recharge. The next E in preserve is exercise. Yes, that daunting word that we think is punishment, but it actually is not because exercise can come in so many different forms. So uh, we can choose something that we like, whether it be riding a bike, roller skating, ice skating, just taking brisk walks, taking a jog, taking a run, um, playing with your pets, that all that counts as exercise. And try to do that at least 30 minutes a day. What that's going to do is elevate your heart rate. And at the same time, it's going to release those feel good hormones, those endorphins in your body that's going to keep you feeling great. And it's going to give you that sense of euphoria where you're going to want to do it again. You're going to, going to want to exercise over again. The next R is rest. Why is that so important? Well, just like our computer, let's say for instance, our computers need that reboot period. It needs a cool down period. You ever have your computer and you've been working on it so much that the fan comes on on the back of your computer? That's letting you know that your computer needs a cool down period, that it's been working too hard. Well, our bodies give us signals that when it's time to rest, when it's time to cool down, when it's time to reboot, so to say, and recharge and plug into ourselves. So rest is imperative. Why? Because during rest, what we do is we lose weight actually in, in, in our sleep. So it's recommended we get seven to nine hours of sleep nightly and that we prepare for our sleep. We prepare for everything else, but we need to prepare for our sleep so that we can have a restful night um, throughout the entire night, not waking up. Uh, we wanna have an uninterrupted time to reboot our systems. 
Uh, when you're sleeping, other things happen. Hormones are released. We'll talk a little bit more about sleep in a, in a little while, but just resting is imperative. Again, this is where those power naps will be very beneficial as well, but make sure when you're taking those power naps that you're doing those power naps in 15 minute increments. So 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes or an hour, and make sure you're not doing it too close to your bedtime so that then you're not waking up in the middle of the night because you've had too much sleep during the day. How to prepare for a restful night's sleep. The first thing you want to do is keep your environment cool. When it's hot and stuffy, you're tossing and turning, you're kicking the blankets off. But if you have a cool environment, you can have a light blanket over you, and that's going to help you, number one, breathe better. It's going to be conducive for um, better sleep because our temperature regulators are turned off when we sleep, and a lot of people didn't know that. You want to keep your environment dark. Light interferes with your melatonin absorption. And melatonin is a chemical that's released in our bodies when we sleep that help us to get that restful night's sleep. However if, you however, if you have that ambient light that comes from your cell phone, from your TV, from maybe that little cable box light, cover all those things up. Turn your cell phones down. Why? Because that little bit of ambient light can actually interfere with your sleep. If, you, if, you, uh, if your place of rest is on the side of your home where that street light comes in, you might wanna get either blackout curtains or get darker blinds that will hinder that light from coming in to interfere with your sleep. Also, when we're talking about keeping a cool environment, it's even recommended that you sleep with a fan because a fan is non-pharmacological oxygen. It'll keep the environment cool and it also enhances your breathing as you sleep. Turn off all those electronics. Now, I know this one is very difficult for some people, especially the cell phone. I'm a person that keeps my cell phone on at night as well, because just in case I get an emergent call or something like that. So I understand that, but I will turn the volume down to keep it on vibrate. And also I turn it face down so I'm not getting that ambient light. So I'm not interfering with my melatonin absorption. So if you can turn your gadgets off, your electronics off, do that. If not, find ways to block that light and turn the sound down. Use pillows for proper head positioning. So if your head is too high or your head is too low, you're gonna wake up with a crook the next morning. You're not gonna feel rested. And also you're, you're just gonna be groggy because you're gonna be tossing and turning throughout the night. Um, it's also recommended that we put a pillow between our knees to help keep our posture um, at, optimal, uh, at an optimal place while we're sleeping. Um, if you're a person that has problems with sleeping, you can use relaxing scents like lavender and chamomile. You, they have room sprays now. They have um, the plugins now that have those relaxing scents that can be beneficial to you getting a restful night's sleep. And the last one is a shocker for a lot of people. Sleep nude. Why in the world am I saying to sleep nude? Well, remember I mentioned that we have hormones that are released in our out of our bodies while we sleep. So when those, hormone, when those hormones and those chemicals are released from our bodies, we don't want them to get trapped on our skin between our clothing. So you allow all of those chemical changes in your body that occur during sleep to actually properly flow when you're sleeping in the nude. This is the, the do not list for a good night's sleep. Do not eat within an hour before going to sleep. If you're eating an, uh, less than an hour before going to bed, now your body's gonna be uh, processing the food that you ate instead of focusing on rest. So now your body is still working when it should be resting. Do not take work to bed. So sometimes people take their computers, they hop in that bed. Now you're sending a signal to your mind that, oh, it's turn up time. <laughs> so when you get in your bed and you're taking your computer, you're taking work to bed, now you're sending mixed signals to your body in your place of rest. When you go to your place of rest, your mind should automatically say, oh, she's shutting it down. Or he's shutting it down now. Do not keep the TV or the radio on. Why? We just talked about it. That ambient light that comes from the television or the radio interferes with melatonin absorption, which in effect interferes with you getting a restful good night's sleep. Do not nap within four hours of sleep. Why? You're going to be waking up in the middle of the night because now you're too rested. So you want to make sure you get your power naps in early. Do not keep your cell phone face up. Again, same reason as for the TV. Um, the radio is just for the noise. You don't want your brain to continue to be working and trying to process what it's hearing instead of truly resting. The TV is the ambient light as well as the noise from the TV as well. 
whether you know it or not, your brain is still trying to process what's going on on the TV and you can still hear what's going on. And your body's, your, your brain is trying to process like, what is it, what's going on? It's still trying to gather that information instead of relaxing and process, processing the information that you already received throughout the day. Um, keeping your cell phone face down, the same reason that light, that ambient light, you wanna make sure that that ambient light doesn't interfere with you getting a peaceful, restful night's sleep. Also, you don't want to drink uh, alcohol within one hour of going to sleep. Same thing, alcohol actually interferes with you having a peaceful night's sleep. Also, your body has to still try to process that when it should be relaxing. Do not lay awake in bed. If you get in your bed or your place of sleep and you notice that you are just wired up, you are just so wired up and you just can't calm down and relax, get out of the bed. That's the best thing to do. Get out of the bed. Um, don't go do anything crazy, but just go and maybe watch TV for a couple minutes or something in another area and then come back and then try to lay down again. And a lot of times you will notice that you'll be able to um, sleep better. And then last but not least, do not drink caffeinated. And I think I might've spelled that wrong, but do not drink caffeinated beverages before bed. Why? Because what does caffeine do? It pumps you up. It wakes you up. It's normally what people drink in the morning to wake up, to get them going. You're not trying to get go, get to going. You're trying to shut it down. So um, they do have decaffeinated beverages. If you're someone who likes to drink something warm at night before bed, they have like sleepy time teas if you're someone who has a problem with going to bed. But it's always the recommend, recommendation to do the natural things first and try all the other things that we discussed before you start implementing medications and things like that. Thank you so much, uh, Aquila. She says she's loving this. This is teaching her exactly what to do. Teaching you, yeah, start changing. You're going to start making changes tonight. Absolutely. I love it. You guys tell me where you're from in the chat. I would love to know where everyone's from. The V in preserve stands for voice. If you have concerns about your health and there's something that you just feel like is not right with your well being, with your health, it could be your skin. Voice your concerns to your physician. Now is not the time to be silent. No more silence. What we're doing now is we are being vocal about our needs. We're being vocal, vocal about the self-care that we need to provide for ourselves. We're even being vocal to our family to let them know so that they know what heredity may do to them later. So no more silence. We've been silent long enough. The, the next E in preserve is educate. Educate yourself, your family on medications, your diagnoses if you already have diagnoses prevention of disease, we have to be educated. Not saying you wanna go and go to Dr. Google for everything, <laughs> but we want you to know what's going on with your body. We want you to know what the signs and symptoms are. We want you to know ways that you can holistically heal yourself. We want you to perform that self-care. And a part of self-care is being educated on ways to stay well and preserve your health. So just to review again, what the preserve, we broke preserve down for those that are just jumping in. We broke down the word preserve and made acronym out of it. So P was to plan. Again, you're going to plan your self-care regimen. The R is for recharge. You're going to plug, unplug from everything else and plug into yourself. The E is for eating. You're going to ditch the crap and eat the crow. You're going to eat those clean, raw, whole, organic foods that are going to leave you sustained and nurtured for a very long time. The S is stress less. When we manage our stress, we know that stress is a silent killer. It's like dripping a slow poison in our veins that kills us slowly over time. And also, it doesn't help us with our uh, managing our healthy weight especially in the gut, because when we're stressing, that cortisol dumps right into our belly. And you know what that belly fat does? That belly fat increases our chances of heart attacks and strokes. So ladies, if your waist size is greater than 35, men, if your waist size is greater than 40, you are directly predisposing yourself to more, to more likely having a heart attack or stroke. So the, we know that the belly is directly related to stress and our diet. So what we're eating has an impact on our overall preservation of health in our life. The next E was exercise, getting it in 30 minutes a day. It could be dancing in your living room. It could be going up and down your stairs at your home. It could be going for a brisk walk. It could be riding your bike. 
make it fun. Whatever you enjoy, just get up and move something and do it for 30 minutes. That's when fat burning mode starts. When, when you've been working, you've been moving your body and getting your heart rate up for 30 minutes or more, okay? And then it's going to release those feel-good hormones, those uh, endorphins that are going to make you feel great and leaving you feeling uh, sustained throughout the day. The next one is R for rest. Just like you have to move something, there's also a time where you need to rest. Again, like our computers, it, when they're overworked, that fan comes on on the back of your laptop or your computer and it lets you know, look, I need a cool down period. The same thing with our, our minds, bodies, and our spirits. We need a cool down period. We need a time to rest. So it's recommended that we get seven to nine hours of sleep nightly. The V an in preserve is for voice. You want to voice any concerns that you have about your well-being, your health, your, your wellness to your doctor or a trusted individual. It could be a nurse, a doctor, a nurse practitioner, and then also voice it to your family because the last thing that you want is you to, for you to have some type of health event and nobody knew that anything was going on with you. And if you do happen to have any type of diagnosis or sicknesses or you're on medications, don't keep it to yourself. The last E is for educate. Educate yourself on the side effects of that medication, what that medication usage is for, and educate your family on your diagnosis, your medications, um, alternate options. Always get a second opinion. All right. Self-care is not selfishness. I don't know why this went over top of each other, but self-care is not selfishness. It's okay to be the most important person to yourself. Self-care makes you the best version of yourself possible. Self-care is necessary to be happy, healthy, harmonious. Self-care preserves your health and self-care reduces serious health occurrences. I am, I am hosting a 14-day self-care challenge. And what that includes is everything that you see here on your screen, membership and a private preserve your health through self-care group on Facebook. Um, a 14-day self-care module. You'll get a module for each day of that 14-day self-care challenge with activities included to jumpstart um, the preservation of your health and to have accountability partners. That's You'll have your accountability partners through the Facebook group. You'll get one printed copy mailed to you um, of the book, Release the Weight Without the Weight. You'll get a ticket to the virtual summit to close out the 14-day challenge, with that, which that date will be announced in the group. Um, the cost of this is normally $197, but for tonight, because we're doing this special preserve your uh, health through self-care, we are discounting that from $197 to $59. I know, I, I know I lost my mind. I think that might be a typo. No, <laughs> but tonight until midnight tonight, um, I am I'm doing this 14-day self-care challenge to preserve your health. We have so many people that we've lost in the past year and it's continuing over to this year. It's like a run on sentence and we're losing people faster and faster. And so that's why it's so important that self-care be a part of, a, of our normal regimen, not something that we just adopt and just go on vacation once a year. We need to be taking our self-care seriously. If you were someone who you know you struggle with what to do to care for yourself and you learned something from today's um, webinar tonight, then this is something that you really, really strongly want to consider doing this 14 day. It's a jump start to your self care and it's going to challenge you to adopt a new way, new healthy lifestyles. So, 14 days, you're going to get 14 modules sent to you via email. You're going to get a printed copy of, of uh, my book, Collaboration Release the Weight Without the Weight, one ticket to the virtual summit where we're going we're gonna to celebrate because that was the last. Um, of the eight recharge pillars of self-care. We're going to celebrate where you started and where you are now that you've challenged yourself for that 14 days. And that challenge starts on March the 1st, okay? That starts March 1st. And anyone who's interested, you can send your payment and your email address to paypal.me, um, Cherie Good. And I see somebody says something in the chat. This is a challenge you will be a part of. Absolutely, thank you. We welcome you. And you're coming from, you're calling in from Louisville, Kentucky. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Everybody else who's on here, please uh, put where you're, where you're chiming in from. I would love to know where you're chi chiming in from. So yes, th so this is a challenge that we're starting on March 1st. 
Um, this price is good until midnight tonight. Again, we're talking about preserving our health through self-care. And oftentimes we don't even know where to even start. That's been the biggest thing that I get messages from my audiences to tell me that, you know, I don't even know where to start with my self-care. But we're taking all the work out of you playing guessing games with your, um, your health and we're outlining everything. Just like we broke down the sleep and how, you, how sleep is so imperative, we're gonna have 14 self-care modules that now we're gonna break down and show you how to preserve your health through self-care. So this was not meant to be a very long summit tonight. I don't wanna keep people long. I know that it's a work day. So we wanted to keep it to 30 minutes or less. I wanna thank everyone who tuned in this evening. At this time, I'm gonna open up the chat if you have any questions. Um, oh, hello, Crystal from Utah. I love it, I love it, yes. L Louisville, Kentucky, and Utah is in the building. I know I saw uh, Delana Watkins on here and she's from the Maryland area. Uh, Larice, I see her on here. She's from Maryland as well. Uh, Dr. Jasmine Gordon, I'm not sure where she's from, but thank you ladies for tuning in this evening. Um, this is my contact information, Dr. Cherie M. Good, totalharmonyenterprises.com. This is my direct email address. If you don't want to ask questions here, you can always email me and I will respond to you within 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours um, with answers to any questions that you may have. Oh, Dr. Jasmine, you're from Atlanta, Georgia. I love it. I love it. Thank you, ladies, for tuning in tonight. Please be sure to follow me on social media at Cherie M. Good. And this is, this is uh, my number that I can be reached at. Um, that's my business line there, and you can reach me there. If anybody has any questions, feel free or comments, please feel free to type it in the feed. Sometimes we learn more by uh, having short webinars instead of doing hours and hours, and then you don't really retain the information that was shared. So I like to do spurts where you learn a little bit, but you'll, you'll remember what you learned here this evening. Anybody have any questions or comments for me? We got about three more minutes before we shut down. You love bite-sized information. Thank you. Yes, I do too. I tend to retain more when I just have the bite-sized information instead of trying to take in a full day or a half a day. You're not finding paypal.me backslash Cherie Good. Did I put, let me make sure I put the right thing in there. Yes, paypal.me backslash Cherie Good. It doesn't have to be capitalized either, sis. And so tonight till midnight, if you need to think on it, ladies, um, again, 14 self-care modules with activities for you to really challenge yourself and really perform the self-care that you need. It's okay to, to make yourself number one on your calendar. We serve everyone else. Yes, thank you, Larice. She said she's looking forward to it, yes. Soul care, soul care. Oh, I love it, Dr. Jazz. And we'll have to do some collaboration. We'll definitely have to uh, get in touch. So send me an email. We can do some things together. Absolutely. Any other questions? Sis, did you find the PayPal? If not, I can also send my cash app, which is Sheree. I'm good. Okay, awesome, sis. I put the, I put my cash app in there as well, but the other one is paypal.me backslash Cherie Good. So that should be working, sis. If it doesn't, you have all my information. Let me send it up again. Here's my information here. Feel free to reach out to me at my email address. So thank you again, ladies. I didn't want to keep anybody long. I just wanted to do a quick 30-minute session. This will be replayable on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Dr. Cherie M. Good, the Recharge Strategist. I will upload it there um, so that folks can watch it um, again at a later time. And you ladies have a good evening. Don't forget to get your seven to nine hours of sleep tonight. And don't forget to recharge. Good night. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sis. I got you.